Hello students, welcome to my class on gastrulation and notochord. So we have done the pre-organogenesis period that is the first 14 days of pregnancy and now we come to the embryonic period that is from 3rd week to 8th week. So first of all we will do the formation of the three germ layers. So we have done that the bilaminar disc was formed by day 8 after fertilization while by day 14 the procordal plate and primitive streak are formed. Now cells proliferating in the region of the primitive streak pass sideways pushing themselves between epiblast and hypoblast. So this is epiblast, this is hypoblast. So this is the primitive streak. Now the cells formed here, they push themselves between epiblast and hypoblast. So they pass in this region and they form the intraembryonic mesoderm or secondary mesoderm. So this is the secondary mesoderm because primary mesoderm has already been formed by the trophoblast cells what we call the extraembryonic mesoderm. So this mesoderm is the secondary mesoderm or we can say the intraembryonic mesoderm and this is the first germ layer to form in human beings. Some cells from the primitive streak displace hypoblast and form a layer known as endoderm. So mesoderm is formed from the primitive streak, intraembryonic mesoderm or secondary mesoderm is formed from primitive streak. Then some primitive streak cells they displace the hypoblast to form the endoderm. And students this process of formation of primitive streak, endoderm and intraembryonic mesoderm is referred to as gastrulation. So what is gastrulation? The process of formation of primitive streak and intraembryonic mesoderm and endoderm by the primitive streak that is referred to as gastrulation. So process of formation of primitive streak, endoderm and intraembryonic mesoderm is referred to as gastrulation. Remaining cells of epiblast now form ectoderm. So these cells, primitive streak cells, they have formed the mesoderm, intraembryonic mesoderm and they have formed the endoderm and the remaining epiblast cells, they give rise to ectoderm. So ectoderm rises from epiblast cells while endoderm and mesoderm, intraembryonic, they arise from the primitive streak. So in this way, the embryonic disc is now made up of three germ layers or we can say the trilaminar disc is formed by day 16 after fertilization. So bilaminar disc made up of epiblast and hypoblast was formed on day 8 after fertilization. So this trilaminar disc comprising of the germ layers, the endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm is formed by day 16 after fertilization. Now we come to the derivatives of ectoderm. So you remember there are five derivatives of ectoderm. So the first two they are starting with E and epidermis of skin and its derivatives including sweat glands, hair follicles, epithelial lining of mouth and lower part of anal canal. So if we consider the skin to be made up of epidermis and dermis, so then the outer layer it is uh, natural that it will be formed by ectoderm because it is the outer layer. So epidermis of skin and its derivatives they are derived from ectoderm and epithelial lining of the extremities, the mouth and the lower part of anal canal. So the extremities of our body, their epithelial lining is also derived from ectoderm. Ectoderm starts from E, epidermis of skin and epithelial lining of the extremities, the mouth and lower part of anal canal. The nervous system, the whole of it is derived from ectoderm, cornea and lens of eye and the adrenal medulla. So there is an adrenal gland in our body. Remember the inner part of the gland, the adrenal medulla is derived from ectoderm. So there are five derivatives of ectoderm. So let us revise it. Epidermis of skin and its derivatives, epithelial lining of the extremities that is mouth and lower part of anal canal, the nervous system which is brain okay and cornea and lens of eye cornea and lens of eye and adrenal medulla so the whole of the nervous system cornea and lens of eye and adrenal medulla are derived from ectoderm so there are five derivatives of ectoderm
Now we come to derivatives of mesoderm. So the systems of our body, skeletal muscular excretory system, they are derived from mesoderm. Dermis of skin. Now you remember ecto ectoderm derivative is epidermis. So dermis of skin is mesoderm derivative. Lining of body cavities. What are these? Pericardial, peritoneal and pleural cavities. Pericardial cavity containing the heart, peritoneal cavity in the abdomen and the pleural cavity containing the lungs. So lining of body cavities is derived from mesoderm. Adrenal cortex is derived from mesoderm. Remember adrenal medulla was derived from ectoderm. Ovaries and testes, they are derived from mesoderm. So students also remember all muscle, whether it is skeletal, smooth or striated is derived from mesoderm except musculature of iris, which is ectodermal in origin. So we did the five derivatives of ectoderm. There we did cornea and lens of eye. So the musculature of iris is also derived from ectoderm. Now we come to derivatives of endoderm. The epithelial lining of digestive and respiratory tract. So digestive tract is inside the body. It is lined by uh, epithelium and that epithelium is derived from endoderm. And uh, then we have the epithelial lining of respiratory system. Lining of majority of urethra and urinary bladder except the trigon. The trigon is, uh, have, is derived from mesoderm. So lining of majority of urethra, epithelial lining of digestive tract, respiratory system, majority of lining of urethra and urinary bladder except the trigon and then we have the exocrine glands including liver and pancreas and endocrine glands including thyroid and parathyroid. They are derived from endoderm. Thymus is also derived from endoderm. So we have five derivatives of ectoderm, we have seven derivatives of mesoderm and we have six derivatives of ectoderm. And remember all musculature is derived from mesoderm except the musculature of iris which is derived from ectoderm. Now we come to the development of notochord. So simply speaking what is notochord? It is the vertebral column of the embryo. So now the embryo is growing, the trilaminar disc is formed. Now the embryo needs a vertebral column. So that is called the notochord. So that is different from the vertebral column of adult. So notochord is the vertebral column of embryo and how it is formed now we are going to do. So the cranial end of primitive streak enlarges to form the primitive knot. So this is the cranial end, end of the primitive streak and a depression appears in the center of the primitive knot called the blastopore. So this is the depression. So cranial end of the primitive streak forms the primitive knot. Cells in the primitive knot multiply and pass between ectoderm and endoderm forming a solid cord called notochordal process. So the cells in the knot, primitive knot, which was there in the cranial end of the primitive streak, those cells they multiply and they pass between ectoderm and endoderm forming the notochordal process. So notochordal process is formed from cells in the primitive knot. Now cells in this process undergo rearrangement to form the notochord. Let us see how the notochordal process is converted into a tube which is called notochordal canal. So we have ectoderm here, endoderm here, mesoderm here, the three germ layers and this is the notochordal canal that has been formed from the notochordal process. Now cells of the canal get mixed up with the, those of endoderm below. Floor of the canal breaks down and it communicates with the yolk sac because yolk sac is lying, lying here in this region and amniotic cavity is lying here. So what happens is the canal gets uh, the canal with notochordal canal which was uh, formed initially. Now it gets converted into neurentric canal which is on one side joining the endoderm here, other side communicating with the ectoderm. So amniotic cavity and yolk sac now are in communication with each other. So neurentric canal is formed. Neur because the neural structures are derived from ectoderm. Entric because the lining of the digestive tract is by uh, the endoderm. So now we have got a communication between ectoderm and endoderm. The amniotic cavity and the yolk sac are communicating with each other. Formation of neurentric canal provides nutrition by diffusion to ectodermal surface of germ disc because the yolk sac 
has got the nutrients now they can come here to this region and provide nutrition to the ectodermal surface of germ disc where here the cells are in the process of rapid differentiation and till now intraembryonic blood circulation has not developed so this is an important phase during the development gradually the walls of the canal get flattened so instead of a rounded canal we have a flat plate of cells called the notochordal plate then a notochordal plate is formed as shown in the figure process of flattening flattening is soon reversed and plate again turns into a tube this tube by proliferation of cells forms a solid rod of cells called the definitive or finally formed notochord so the finally formed notochord is formed by day 17 to 18 after fertilization and this is the vertebral column of the embryo so students in the examination it's a very important question which is asked what is gastrulation and then another question which can be asked is uh, notochord so write a short note on notochord so if you get a note on notochord then do describe how the notochord is formed and then you also have to describe after describing the different stages in the formation of notochord the function fate applied anatomy and evolutionary importance of notochord so what is the function of notochord it is the vertebral column in embryonic life it induces surface ectoderm to form neural plate so when the notochord is formed it induces the overlying ectoderm now it, it it stimulates the overlying ectoderm to form the neural plate and that the development of nervous system is initiated so inducer is that which has to be present to initiate a process so when the notochord is formed only then the surface ectoderm dermal cells decide to form the neural plate which gives rise to the nervous system so notochord is an inducer to the overlying ectoderm to form the neural plate so these two are the functions of notochord fate of notochord nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc so notochord is the vertebral column of the embryo but in the adult it forms the nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc so here we have the bodies of two vertebra and we have the intervertebral disc this is made up of nucleus pulposus in the center which is the soft portion and annulus fibrosus on the periphery so this nucleus pulposus is the remnant of notochord in adults other remnant of notochord in adults is apical ligament of dense so it extends from tip of odontoid process of axis vertebra second cervical vertebra so it has a odontoid process from its tip to the anterior margin of foramen magnum of skull this is the extent of apical ligament of dense so somebody asks you what are the two derivatives of notochord in adults you say it is the nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc and the apical ligament of dense which extends from the odontoid process on the axis vertebra to the anterior margin of foramen magnum so these are the two remnants of notochord in adults now as far as the applied anatomy of notochord is concerned we had the formation of neurentric canal during formation of notochord so that may remain patent if that remain patents lumen of intestine so that was derived from endoderm communicates with central canal of spinal cord this is derived from ectoderm so ectoderm gives rise to brain and spinal cord so now what happens is if the neurentric canal is patent so that embryo will have a communication between lumen of intestine and the central canal of spinal cord so neurentric canal the name is neurentric it is joining the nervous tissue with the intestine so lumen of intestine with the central canal of spinal cord entric means intestine okay so notochordal cells may proliferate to form a tumor which is known as chordoma so this that is the applied anatomy of the notochord and now we come to the evolutionary significance of notochord notochord is the defining characteristic of the members of phylum chordata a large and diverse group which includes all species with backbones so phylum chordata all the members of phylum chordata have got a notochord now in sub phylum vertebrata notochord only exists in embryonic form so this notochord also has a evolutionary significance so if you get a note on notochord write about its formation the different stages and then tell about the function fate applied anatomy and evolutionary significance of notochord make good diagrams then you'll score marks in the 
examinations. So this completes my topic on the gastrulation and notochord. So the third to eighth week is referred to as the embryonic period. The first two weeks are referred to as the pre-organogenesis period. Third to eighth week is the embryonic period. Most congenital anomalies produced by teratogens act acting during this period. So in, during this period, if teratogens are administered third to eighth week, then congenital anomalies, there is likelihood of congenital anomalies in the newborn. So um, this is the importance of the th third to eighth week that uh, if teratogens act during this period, then congenital anomalies are likely to occur. So till the next time I meet you, it's bye from, from my side. Thank you.